there's a lot of uh, Enigma simulations out there, but they're they're flat, they're two D, and they go they do a good job of showing you how it encodes it. But what they don't get down into is the the nitty gritty behind it. What happens underneath the the hood of the machine? You can't really see. Um, you know what, what happens when you press a key. This is the sort of thing I love to dig down into. Um, you know, if you press a key, what physically happens in the machine? What uh, things are, are turning? Not just the electronics going on, but what's what's turning? What's pushing? What? Uh, how is it actually turning the rotors? What's you know what, what things are going on in there? And this is what I want to try and get across in uh, in this. And you, it's difficult to do that in a, in a two D flat image. But when you can look around it and you can. Uh, you know, open up the case and you can take out the rotors and you can press the button and see what happens. I can build a lot more into that. So you would start off, you, um, there's some pieces of paper on the table in 3D. You can pick them up um, and look at them. You can set the keys. You can open up the Enigma, take out all of the rotors uh, that are there, swap them around um, with the, the initial one, the Enigma Eins. You can have uh, three rotors that are in there and two spares. With the other one, there's eight rotors plus uh, a, a thin one to swap, a beta and a gamma, and the um, reflector. You can change all of those rotors around. You can uh, change all the settings on them, all on screen, just using your mouse uh, and your keyboard. You can walk around it. You can pop them all back in, press the keys on the keyboard with the mouse or using your, your keyboard if you have it. Um, and once you've encoded your message and you've got um, it writes it out on a, a message for you, you can actually go along and send it to someone. So there's a transceiver uh, radio standing next to it. You can tune that to a certain frequency. Um, if you have uh, a friend with another version on the internet, you can tune to the same frequency and send a message to them. And they will be able to receive that and decode it. We know a lot about Enigma. We know uh, when I type this in with this particular set of settings, it sh will come out with this version. So it has been checked through um, and made sure that it is giving the same results as uh, GCHQ's version on CyberChef, as uh, you know all the other simulators are doing. Um, so you know it's got all the right wiring for each of the rotors. Uh, when you put in the plug sockets, uh, you see the wires all join up, uh, and that's all picking up. So yes, it's it's you know it's as accurate as all the other simulations. And a lot of it is going through all the, the documentation beforehand. There's a lot of research that goes into it before I start even sitting there programming a, a simulation up uh, and doing a number of tests and making sure that you know I know how to actually do the, uh, the engine underneath of it. And once I've built that, then I start overlaying the graphics on top of it. So kind of that's my first um, position I go to is to, to work out the, the, the mechanism and, and get the engine going inside of it. Um, uh, and then I can you know, build from there and start putting the pretty side of it on and uh, making the rotors turn and you know, putting the user interface on and making it so that it hopefully is as, as um, straightforward enough to use. There's a couple of um, people I think will, will come to this and have a go is um, one that has heard about Enigma. Maybe they've seen uh, the imitation game or something like that and they want to learn a bit more about it. Uh, and I'd like them to come into it and have a look, find out what it's about, and then have some questions about it and be able to um, come into Bletchley Park and the Museum of Computing and find out some more information like I did um, and, and you know, get as excited as I did at coming uh, and finding all this information out. Um, and the other way around, people who've come along uh, to see the museum, uh, found a bit about it, there's a lot to see in one day uh, there and you can't necessarily take it all in but you come away and you go well actually I was interested in that where do I find more information about it what do I uh, do to find out more you know I, I just think the likes of Alan Turing and John Tiltman and Bill Tutton and Tommy Flowers should be known you know by more people uh, you know a lot of people have heard of Alan Turing especially with the the 50 pound note coming up as well he's going to be uh, on the 50 pound note but, but all these other people all these other intellectual heroes of mine you know I, i'd love other people to know about these people i'd like want people to get bitten by this bug and, and find out more about it <laughs>